As discussed in the chapter opening video and your textbook, one aspect of the search for life beyond Earth is the search for extraterrestrial life, or SETI, which often uses radio telescopes like those shown here to listen for signals that alien civilizations might be broadcasting. But what are the chances of success through these efforts? One way to address this question is to consider the factors that determine the number of civilizations likely to exist today. We can do this through what we call the Drake Equation, which is our topic in this video. The Drake Equation is named for astronomer Frank Drake, who first wrote down his equation in 1961. Here, we see Dr. Drake with his equation in its original form. In this book, we will use the Drake Equation in the slightly modified form shown here. The left side tells us we are seeking to estimate the number of civilizations, which in this case means civilizations capable of broadcasting signals into space, that we might expect to find in our Milky Way galaxy. On the right side, the first term is the number of habitable planets, or worlds, since this represents the total number of worlds on which there is at least a chance of life. The second term is the fraction of these worlds that actually have life on them. The third is the fraction of those worlds with life that at some point give rise to a civilization capable of interstellar communication. And the fourth is the fraction of those worlds on which the civilization is there now, so that we could in principle communicate with it, as opposed to only at some point in the distant past. We don't know the actual values of any of these terms, but we can make reasonable guesses for at least some of them. Let's start with the first, the number of habitable planets. The statistics of extrasolar planets discovered to date indicate that planets are common and that many of these planets have sizes and orbits that make them seem likely to be potentially habitable. As a result, it now seems reasonable to suppose that a significant fraction of all stars have at least one habitable planet in which case there may be 100 billion or more habitable worlds in our galaxy alone. The second term, F-life, is more difficult because Earth is the only world on which we know for sure that life arose, and we cannot do statistics with only one example. However, as discussed in your textbook, laboratory and geological evidence suggests that an origin of life may have been almost inevitable given the conditions on the early Earth, in which case F-life might be close to one meaning that most planets that are habitable would actually have life. Just keep in mind that until we actually discover life elsewhere, it remains possible that F-life is actually close to zero, in which case Earth might be unique in having life. Moving on to the third term, we are essentially asking how likely it is that a world on which primitive life takes hold would eventually have that life evolve into a form intelligent enough to build radio telescopes. This term is particularly difficult because the example of Earth is somewhat ambiguous. Recall the geological timescale on which we've noted that the early origin of life may suggest that life got started fairly easily. However, it then took nearly 4 billion years for intelligence like ours to evolve, which makes the evolution of intelligence seem much more difficult. Moreover, many seemingly random events, including the KT impact 65 million years ago, appear to have played a role in making our evolution possible. Nevertheless, some biologists suspect that the evolutionary advantages of intelligence mean it is likely to evolve eventually, and in your text you will read how data like those shown here provide at least some support for this idea. To consider what this would mean, try answering the following question. Suppose that life is common, and the time it took for a civilization to arise on Earth is typical for worlds with life. Should we then expect worlds on which civilizations at some point arise to be common or rare? The answer is A, common, which you can understand by thinking back to our cosmic calendar. Recall that our universe is about 14 billion years old, which means our 4.5 billion year old solar system was born when the universe was already some two-thirds of the way through its history to date. This, along with the fact that most stars have lifetimes as long or longer than our suns, suggests that there ought to be many habitable worlds that formed billions of years before Earth and are still habitable today. Therefore, if life is common and Earth's example is typical, then worlds on which civilizations have at some point arisen should be quite common. This brings us to the last term in our Drake Equation, 
As we've just discussed, even if civilizations are quite common, they might have arisen on particular worlds at almost any time over the past 10 billion or so years. In that case, the fraction of worlds on which a civilization exists now so that communication with them would in principle be possible depends on their survivability. If civilizations tend to destroy themselves shortly after developing the capability for interstellar communication, then F now would be small, but if they survive for the long term, then it might be fairly large. It's worth noting that this fact has extraordinary implications to our own civilization and to what it would mean to find evidence that other civilizations exist. All civilizations must go through time periods like we are in today, in which we have the potential both to travel into space and to destroy ourselves. Therefore, proof that even a single other civilization has managed to survive would give us hope that we ourselves may successfully navigate this difficult period of human history.